Ohayo gozaimasu. I am Lady Narata. I hope you are all doing well. Today I will talk about kintsugi. Kintsugi, also known as golden joinery, is the Japanese art of mending broken pottery with urushi, a plant based adhesive lacquer resin mixed with gold or silver dust or other pottery fragments. The word kintsugi is often used interchangeably with the word kintsukuroi, which means golden concealment or golden repair. As a result of using kintsugi, a broken vessel will look more gorgeous and more precious than before it was fractured. With kintsugi, what is broken is not to be hidden or viewed as a source of shame. Rather, the goal is to find beauty in what is broken. But before we get to that, I will go a bit deeper into the material that is used for this unique craft of healing. Urushi. Urushi is a natural allergenic resin. It is a sap collected from the Chinese lacquer tree. Mainly used for lacquerware as an adhesive, Urushi helps to beautify and strengthen wood crafts. It can be found in architectural preservation projects, used as a way to protect materials from rusting, incorporated in sculpture, or used to fill and harden woven textiles. But in this case, urushi is used to join together broken pieces of ceramic and, with some gold or silver decoration, creates a stunning end product. Now that we know a little bit more about what is used in kintsugi, why don't you sit back? I will tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a shogun named Ashikaga Yoshimasa. Ashikaga Yoshimasa had a Chinese tea bowl that he loved very much. One day, the tea bowl shattered. Distressed, he sent the tea bowl back to China to be fixed. The bowl came back, fixed, but in a way quite unpleasant to poor Ashikaga Yoshimasa's eyes. The bowl was held together with ugly metal staples, the customary way of fixing pottery in China at the time. Japanese craftsmen thus ventured out to find an alternative, more aesthetically pleasing way to repair pottery. Kintsugi, the art of mending pottery with lacquer and gold, was born. Japanese craftsmen loved kintsugi so much that some of them were accused of deliberately breaking prized ceramics just so they could fix them again using kintsugi. The end. Intriguing to think that kintsugi was the result of one man's dissatisfaction with a stapled pottery. But that was only one of many stories that tell of the origin of kintsugi. Another story tells of the daimyo Toyotomi Hideyoshi and his prized Korean tea bowl, which was accidentally dropped by an attendant. Yet another story, very similar to the first, tells of a shogun who damaged a precious tea bowl and caused cracks to appear on the vessel. Afraid that he would be ridiculed for using a broken tea bowl during the Japanese tea ceremony, he challenged craftsmen to repair the tea bowl so that it would look even more beautiful than it did before. So, the craftsman filled the cracks with lacquer resin sprinkled with powdered gold, and the vessel did indeed become more precious than before. Lacquerware technology advanced rapidly during the 15th and 16th centuries. High appreciation for the art of kintsugi came from the Japanese tea ceremony. A tea master extraordinaire, Sen no Rikyu, embraced his wabi-sabi philosophy. Wabi means the way of finding beauty in simple matters, or rustic beauty. Sabi means the way of finding beauty in reflective, quiet solitude, or aged beauty. Together, these two make wabi-sabi, which means imperfection through ordinary wear and tear, something inevitable as one progresses through life. To Rikyu, Kintsugi was a manifestation of this wabi-sabi philosophy. Kintsugi tells the story of the pot the love and care of its owner, the repair that it received as part of this care, and the skills and the artistry of the repairer. Rikyu was against the love of perfection, of which the embodiment was a superior porcelain imported from China that displayed incredible symmetry. Instead, he treasured imperfection. Furuta Oribe, a minor warlord and ardent follower of Rikyu, decided to break his collection of ceramics so that he could practice kintsugi. However, instead of praising him for his acts, Rikyu disapproved of them and believed that the true value of kintsugi is not in its outward appearance or achieved intentionally through such violent acts. 
He considered Oribe's destruction and reconstruction of the ceramics a kind of contrived, twisted vanity, not at all in line with his philosophy to let things be. From these stories, and especially the account of Sen no Rikyu, the effect and principles of Kinsugi, as well as wabi-sabi, can be described as such. They suggest meaning and importance through a kind of recycling. Like the Taoist philosophy, they embrace non-attachment and accept transience as a permanent, inevitable, liberating feature of life. Kintsuki is a transformative repair craft. Instead of trying to hide a history of damage, it uses precious metals to bring attention to the object and transform its appearance. In transformative repair, sealed cracks are visible and can be felt when touched. They are totally and overtly noticeable. A repaired crack can link to many things, threat, urgency, catastrophe, or risk, as well as care, amelioration, and hope. As said by Yutaka Otaki, a Kintsugi practitioner, unlike Western-style repair that must conceal any damage or history of repair, Kintsugi shows deliberate and conspicuous care for any object and derives from the beauty of imperfection. For pottery that is repaired with kintsugi, such a comparison can be made. Like footprints traveled by soldiers returning from battle, they tell stories of healing and learning. The ideologies that come with kintsugi can be applied through many areas of life. One in particular, medicine, is being considered, proposed, and tested. In the metaphor of the shattered vase, a metaphor described in a section of Hideki K. Sherb's dissertation, survivors of mental and physical trauma commonly describe their experiences as shattering and destructive, as if some aspect of their lives has been destroyed, whether that be their worldview, sense of self in relation to the outside world and those around them, or their assumptions about life and what it means to continue to live. Many discussions thus far in physical and mental therapy have been focused on bringing survivors back to the way they once were. For survivors of trauma, this is problematic as it does not leave any room for acceptance of an individual's lived experiences. Experiences cannot be undone. No one can turn back time. Physical and emotional scars may never truly disappear once they are made, and trying to conceal or mask damage increases the shame, stigma, and isolation surrounding a topic that needs to be discussed and shared openly. That is why, through artistic projects in medical settings such as visual self-portraits and medical tattooing, the results can be far more rewarding. Patients can feature their scars and other damage instead of minimizing or camouflage them. They can wear their imperfections proudly. The world breaks everyone, and afterward many are strong at the broken places. I hope you have learned something useful in today's presentation about Kintsugi. Just as the broken pot has become more beautiful now broken than it ever was before as a symmetrical perfect pot, you can embrace your imperfections as part of your unique beauty. Remember, beauty is not necessarily lost through wear and tear.